This is Studio 809. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Outdoors Hiking Bob podcast. You can check me out and get links to my social media and all that stuff at hikingbob.com. It's November 20th, 2024, and I'm doing something a little different this week. Each November and December, the Give Pikes Peak campaign, a major fundraising event for nonprofit groups in the Pikes Peak region, goes into full swing. As a media partner, each year I feature some of the groups that are in the great outdoors or related categories. Instead of featuring a different group over the next few weeks, I'm instead releasing four podcasts today, each one featuring a different nonprofit, including the one you are about to listen to. So without further ado, here is one of those groups. Enjoy and go to givepikespeak.org to donate. Next up on the series of podcasts we're doing on the Give Pikes Peak campaign, I have Christina Haywood, who is the executive director of the Garden of the Gods Foundation. And of course, we all know Garden of the Gods, probably the biggest tourist draw in all of the state. And it sits right here in Colorado Springs. And contrary to what some people believe, it's actually a city park, not a state park, a national park, but our own special treasures here. Christina, thank you for being on the podcast. Thanks for having me, Bob. I'm excited to be here and to talk to something about something that's really close to my heart. Absolutely. So we're in the Give campaign. This is your first time, if I remember correctly, your first time in the Give campaign. So I guess we start off by people who may not be familiar with the foundation, because there's the Guard of the Gods Visitor Center, and there's the Friends of the Guard of the Gods. And then, of course, there's the city parks part that runs the Guard of the Gods. Tell us what the Guard of the Gods Foundation does. Yeah, so at our core, our mission is to preserve, protect, and enhance the Garden of the Gods Park. And this incredible place is a natural marvel that millions of people visit each year. And our goal is to ensure that it remains pristine and accessible for generations to come. And we focus on supporting sustainable practices, improving facilities, investing in educational initiatives that highlight the park's unique geology, ecology, and history. Awesome. So how long has the foundation been around? So we've been around for nearly 30 years. We're going to be celebrating our 30th anniversary next year. And since our founding, the Garden of the Gods Foundation has contributed over $6.8 million towards the preservation and maintenance of the Garden of the Gods Park. And that's a legacy that we're very proud of. And it's all thanks to the support of our community, our visitors to the park, and our donors who believe in protecting this landmark. Holy smoke, that's a lot of money. Uh, am I correct in understanding, and I remember when this happened, because I've lived here long enough to remember this, that it's the foundation that built the visitor center? Is that Am I correct on that? That's right. Yeah, the Garden of the Gods Foundation owns and operates the Garden of the Gods Visitor and Nature Center. And the visitor center is actually our primary revenue generating engine for our contributions to the park. So when someone comes and they're buying a cup of coffee or a t-shirt or attending one of our programs that occur daily uh, throughout throughout the year, they are contributing to the support of the park. And this year alone, our contribution to the park from the revenue at the visitor center is $764 thousand dollars wow so three quarters of a million dollars from the mm -hmm. visitor center supporting the park so when you're you know you, you guys are doing this incredible work the visitor center is beautiful and i remember how that came about because it turns out the buildings they had in the park really weren't supposed to be there it was a deed issue they had to move them out the city didn't have the money to build a visitor center and the foundation stepped in and built this beautiful visitor center right across the street because couldn't be in the park Right across the street, it's a beautiful visitor. The visitor center itself is free, correct? That's correct. Awesome. And it serves kind of like the, you know, there's a, there's a guest desk there where people come and ask questions and the beautiful observation deck on the, on the, on the west side of it, which everybody takes their picture on the, on the, on the, on the deck out there, I believe. Tell us specifically what things people may be aware of since the visitor center that you may have helped um that the, the foundation may have helped finance and, and support and make happen 
We have a really special and unique partnership with the City Parks Department, and we are able to create fundamental change for the park and for our city through that partnership. We have uh, city administrative, parks administrative staff that work out of the visitor center. We have parks interpreters, uh, the park rangers in the park, the park manager, all of us work together to do the best that we can every day to help support the park and to help support our community. And when you're in the park and you're looking around at the trails, at the bathrooms, at the parking facilities, everything that you see in the park has been touched by the contributions of our community and and a lot of that through the foundation and a lot of people don't realize that the park itself was based on individual giving that it was a gift to the city and through the work of the foundation we're able to continue that legacy of giving back to the community and giving back to the park when i take people there i always point to that huge plaque on gateway rock which which is basically what dedicated the park and it's interesting it says it's to the people of colorado springs um which is i think a it's a nuance but it's a very important nuance on how that was given was it given to the government of the city it was given to the people of the city which of course this you know the government operates it maintains it along with your help from the foundation but um i thought that was a very important and very insightful of the family that donated that to, to the park. I thought that was really interesting how that was done. Yeah, it's for the people and it will always remain free for the people to come and visit and explore and enjoy. And And I think one really important thing to remember is that although it will always be free to the public and to our people, free isn't free and it takes a lot of work and a lot of funding a lot of people holding hands to help to make this park the safe and welcoming place that it is there's that beautiful new uh, bathroom facility that opened what, last year at the uh, main parking lot there at the at the central garden right underneath the kissing camels that was a huge um, undertaking because there's as we're finding out now with the current project, bringing water into the park, there's not a lot of water in the park and a lot of things were done there, but it's, a, and it's open, you know, it's a bathroom facility. It's actually open year round, which not the case. A lot of them um, in our parks because they're lack of, it's complicated, but uh, uh, you know, appreciate the work that the foundation does with your foundation been around for 30 years, obviously done a lot of great work. What other projects might there be in there? Are you guys pretty much touch everything? I guess is the best way to put it. Is that, is that, is that I, I'm trying to think of something specific, but I'm thinking about it and going, you guys touch everything in here. So it's actually pretty awesome. A little bit of everything, uh, even from the, the summer shuttle that runs throughout the summer to help people get in and out of the park without having to walk in or drive in, reducing cars in the park. And it's a free shuttle. And that's a partnership between the visitor center, the foundation and the city. And even now, during this waterline project that has some of the roads closed in the park, the park is still open and we want to help people get into the park. And so we also have that shuttle running uh, Monday, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday to help our guests get in and out of the park safely and easily. For people who are not aware of, you've never visited Garden of the Gods, you're listening to this, you're not from the from the region. There's basically one road <laughs> that goes through the park. It's one way, except for a couple of side roads that take you in and out of the park that are two way. But it in the summer, it gets a little busy in the park and parking can be a little bit of a challenge. So the shuttle has been a great way that you guys have helped with. has been a great way to ease that. Um, that congestion in the park. And of course, if you're hiking in the park and walking around, the fewer cars, the better for your enjoyment of the park, less noise and less traffic and all that kind of great stuff. With your work in the, with your work in the park, and with the work of the foundation, can you give us a hint on any big things you might have coming up in the future? Anything that we could look forward to coming up? 
Yeah, so a couple projects that we're working on and just completed, the Visitor Center just completed an expansion of our parking area. So as you said, parking is at a premium pretty much throughout the year. And uh, in June, we wrapped up expanding our parking lot at the Visitor Center to help people be able to get in, safely park. They can hop on a shuttle and go enjoy the park. And then this year, we're also breaking ground on expanding our restrooms that currently our restrooms for our female facilities, we only have six toilets, which when you're looking at 10,000 visitors a day to the visitor center, that's not enough. And we are more than tripling the size of our women's restrooms uh, and, and doubling the size of the men's restrooms. And that's just going to make things easier and and a smoother visit for all of our guests and and also to take uh some of the the load off of that one park restroom and uh and another project that we're working on is we are inviting our community to join the garden of the gods foundation in supporting the park through a new program that we've just started called the gateway guardians and locals will will recognize Gateway that uh, the main rocks in the park are called the Gateway Rocks. And they were called that because they were originally called the Gateway to the Rockies. And when you look through those Gateway Rocks, you see Pikes Peak shining in the distance. And our Gateway Guardians, uh, they're a group that is there to help to support the park's um, preservation for future generations. And as a gateway guardian, you'll belong to a dedicated group that's passionate about protecting the park's history, culture, and recreation opportunities. And these guardians are gonna get exclusive access to VIP events, behind the scenes tours, private hikes, uh, discounts at the visitor center, recognition in our annual report, and special communication with exclusive updates on how their contributions are helping to preserve our incredible landscape. Wow, that sounds like a pretty cool deal. I might have to look into that. Uh, Absolutely. And, and, and check that out. It's um, right on our website at gardenofgods.com forward slash guardians. Cool. I'll have to check that out. We'll put the uh, put a link in the show notes. Um, I remember Gateway, you know, people, you talk about Gateway Rock. A, it's like every photographer gets a picture of Pikes Peak through the Gateway Rocks. It's a gorgeous picture. And I remember back in the day before the big road reconstruction and moving the visitor center out of there, that the road used to go, used to drive right through Gateway Rocks. And there was the old... Um, the old trading post around behind there, all that's gone now. But I, I do have pictures. I can prove that I've been there <laughs> way back in the day. Uh, the work that's been done in the Guard of the Gods is gorgeous. You see, I remember before its current iteration, uh, when the roads were different, the, the, the current setup of it is just beautiful. It's a beautiful park. I I may not be incorrect when I say it's like the number one or two visitor attraction in the state. I think it's like that and the Air Force Academy are, I think, like the number one and two places in the state. It is. Um, and we actually will often see more visitors than even Rocky Mountain National Park. Well, because it's a pain in the neck to get in there. You have to have an advanced <laughs> reservation and everything. <laughs> and it's yeah, a long people way can off. just come and visit anytime. <laughs> yep. Christina, with moving forward, people who are going to donate. You've kind of told us what's coming up for the future. How else can people help you besides, obviously you want them to give it the uh, give Pikes Peak, but how else can people support your foundation? Yeah, so definitely check out the, the Give campaign uh, for your contributions. Check out the Gateway Guardians program and also come and visit. Don't just wait until grandma's visiting from New York to take her to the visitor center. Check out the, all of the programs that we have happening every day at the visitor center. They're not just for tourists. We've got programs for all ages, uh, school age kids, all the way up to retired folks, 
all day. Um, so come and visit the visitor center and see some of the great work that we're doing um, because there's so much that goes into keeping the Garden of the Gods Park beautiful and functional and safe for people who love it. So, so come and check out this just all inspiring experience. The displays in the uh, in the visitor center are just beautiful and uh, and very informative. Um, I always like it when they're not only just like pretty pictures, but beautiful displays and inform people about what's going on in the area, what they might see when they're out in the park. I was just out in the park when we had the recent snowstorm, and I'm me and my dog are hiking through there, and some of the pictures we got with the snow on the rocks, and it was just it's just beautiful. So it's a beautiful place to visit year round in the summer it's gorgeous with the wildflowers and everything nice and green in the winter when there's fresh snow on the ground it's a beautiful place i'm fortunate to be able to see it from a distance from my front yard but it's over there and it's, it's just a beautiful attraction christine anything else you'd like to tell us about how people can help you or anything else about the foundation you know we're so grateful for our community support and and for your support bob uh and we we're just thrilled to be a part of this give campaign you know for for the past 29 years we have been very content to be very silent about our contributions to the park and just kind of kept it very uh, very insulated and made our contribution and wanted the contribution to speak for itself. And now we've really come to the realization that we can be an avenue for our community to support the park that we all love and cherish so much. And so we want to to open this up to our entire community to say, hey, we love this national natural landmark. Let's all join together to make sure that it stays pristine and beautiful and safe for for all of us and for our kids and our grandkids. As the sign says, it's for the people of Colorado Springs. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Absolutely. Well, Christina, thank you so much, A, for the work the foundation does. I, I know that the Guard of the Gods would not be the treasure and the gem that it is without the foundation's incredible support. You said it was almost $7 million worth of support over the last 30 years. It would not be what it is today. That visitor center would not be what it is today without the foundation support. So thank you and the foundation for the work you do for all the people listening. Help support this park and help support this foundation that supports the park and uh, and make this what it is. It is. It's a natural historic landmark, but that does not make it a national park. It's strictly a city run operation with the help of the foundation and many others. So Christina, thank you again for being on and best of luck with the Give campaign. Thanks so much, Bob. I appreciate it.